everyone. Today we're going to continue learning about maps. Remember, we've already learned that a map is a drawing of a place from up above, almost like you're flying over the place in an airplane. So far we've learned that all maps have a title, which tell us where the map is of. So if it's a map of the school, it would say school map. We've also learned about the compass rows, which tells us what directions are on the map, and it usually will tell us where north, south, east and west star. We've learned about map symbols and about map keys. Remember the map key tells us what all those little symbols on a map mean. So today I'm going to be reading you a story called Mapping Penny's World. This is going to review some of those things that we've already learned about and it's going to help us get ready for an activity we're going to do later this week. Mapping Penny's World. It's written by Laureen Levy. My name is Lisa, and my class is making maps this month. My teacher, Mr. Jason, says a map is a picture of some place from above. It's like flying over that spot in an airplane. Mr. Jason says we can make a map of any place, like a room, a yard, or a neighborhood. Maybe I could make a map of my bedroom at home. Now this, the title of this map is called Our School. So this is a map of their school. Here's their map key. The red star is their classroom. The little bush or this little green squiggle here is a tree. The green dot is a bush. This symbol is a slide. We've got swings, a fence. The blue lines are the exits. The yellow lines are the parking. That symbol there is a flag. And then that there is the sidewalk. And then you can see all of those symbols on the map. I'll measure my room and everything in my room to help me make my map. Of course, I'll have to include Penny's bed. Penny is my Boston Terrier, and she sleeps in here too. Do you want to measure the fish tank, Penny? My map shows how my bedroom would look from overhead, as if I were looking down from the ceiling. This is a close-up map of the fish tank. Thanks for your help, Penny. So here is the map of Lisa's bedroom. I like how she labeled some of the things in her room, and then she also used a map key to help people who are going to read the map know what everything in there is. So I see here's her bed. This here doesn't have a label, but I can look over my map key and see, oh, that's her toy chest. This gray line space here is a window. Oh, the little orange fish shaped things here are the fish in her fish tank. So that's what a map of a bedroom might look like. Penny likes to hide her toys and other stuff in the yard. I have found shoes and socks in the strangest places. Maybe I'll make a map of all Penny's hideouts. On this map, some of the symbols stand for the goodies that Penny has hidden outside. The rest of the symbols represent the fence, table, and other things that are supposed to be out there. Penny, if you hide my doll, you'll be in big trouble. So this is the map of, this is called Penny's Treasure Map. There's the title written in big letters. And it's a map of all the silly places that Penny likes to hide things. So let's see. Ooh, I see this orange bone here. Do you see the bone on the map? Let's see, oh, it's right down there. So that's where Penny likes to hide the bone. And it looks like it's right in front of the house next to the brick path. Pretty cool, huh? Maps are good for giving directions. Suppose Penny's friend Maxine wants to come over. You could say, go out your back door, turn right by the trash cans, crawl under the gap in the wooden fence, and squeeze through the bushes. Turn left, look for the yellow fire hydrant, turn right on the sidewalk, go to the third house on the right with the red door, sit down in front of it and bark. Oof! Or you could draw a map instead. That might be a bit easier. 
Here is the shortest way from Maxine's house to our house. It's a lot longer if you go around the block instead of going the back way. So instead of giving all those directions, they could draw a map instead. Now, I can't take Maxine when I ride my bike because there's only room for Penny in the basket. There are, these are our trails. To make this map, I measured our footpath with a pedometer. That's a special tool that shows how far a person walks. For bike trails, I used an odometer, which shows how far a vehicle travels. The map scale shows the real distance in the park. And according to the map, the distance between point A, which is here, and B is two tenths of a mile. That's not too far. When we go into the neighborhood, Penny has some favorite places she likes to visit again and again. I made this three-dimensional map with construction paper and clay. The numbers show where Penny can do different activities. So we learned about how symbols stand for different things on a map. Well, sometimes certain maps might have numbers instead of those symbols. So I look around at the map of the park and I see this pond. I see a fountain, I see a couple trees, and then I see these numbers. A lot, if there's numbers, there's still going to be a map key that tells you what each of those numbers means. So let's look what number one is. Oh, number one, watch turtles and ducks. Oh, and number one's at the pond. Doesn't that make sense? How about, let's do number three, beg for new toys. Let's find the number three on here. Oh. Do you see it? It's right up here towards the top at the pet store. Pat's Pets. That's a good place to beg for new toys if you're a dog, isn't it? Penny loves to travel outside her neighborhood, too. I think there are special places she would enjoy visiting, like a doggy treat factory, a really huge park, or a big dog show. This map shows a few of the places Penny can go, and I'm going to go with her. So this is a map of the world. You can see all the continents in color. The ocean is water, and then there's different animals that you might see in those continents. Those are some of the animals we learned about when we did habitats. But don't forget the maps, Penny. The end. Thank you everybody for listening to Mapping Penny's World. Later this week, you guys are going to get to practice using maps and then you're gonna to get to make a map of your own world. So a map of your room, all right? So thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye.